Save time and money by accepting dues payments on your at-home net website. Accept eChecks, Visa, MasterCard, and Discover in just a few clicks. Contact your account manager to find out how. Welcome to What's New in At-Home Net. This edition will cover new features and enhancements for October 2012. We've got a lot of exciting things to talk about, so let's get going. The first thing we'll want to do is log in as an administrator. If you've been watching some of our What's New installments this year, then you'll know that we've been going through our features and doing what we call upping them, where we revamp or really drastically improve and enhance a feature based primarily on customer feedback. So far we've upped features like announcements, classifieds, documents, hot links, and others. This month we're proud to announce that we have upped the message board feature, giving it an entirely new look and feel. Let's check it out. The new enhancements to this feature are designed to give you a greater level of control and a greater flexibility in just how your residents interact within this feature. So let's take a look at some of the new layout. One of the first things you'll notice is this new Choose a Category box. You can create whatever categories you'd like here. And the default category is General. One of the best things about this is as you are creating your categories, which we'll do by clicking Add, Edit, Delete Categories, you'll see as you go to Add a Category, we'll say for instance in this example, Evening Activity Groups. You can customize your view security level so that only the residents you choose have access to this message board. That's just one of the perks of this feature, but let's go back to the main interface. So you'll also notice these different columns which give you specific information about the message board. Categories tells you the different subject types. Topics shows you the number of topics within that type. So for instance, under the category Employment for Teens, we have two topics. If we drill down deeper, we'll see those two topics are lawn mowing and pet walking. You'll also see here the number of views for each one of these topics, meaning how many people have actually clicked on it and viewed it, the number of replies to this particular topic as well, and the author of the particular message board topic. Back to our main screen, the number of posts in each category, as well as the last post made. And these arrows will allow you to sort within these categories. You'll also notice here at the bottom, you can change between pages if you have a lot of different messages. Right now we're seeing the first 10 of 15 categories. There's the remaining 11 to 15. Now let's dig a little deeper. Now as a default, now that this feature has been upped, you might notice that all of your messages have been automatically grouped into the general category. We've gone ahead and created some new categories to differentiate our messages. So let's say for instance, here you see we have a category specifically for social activities. I created that using the add, edit, delete category functions that we went over before. But here under our general category, as we can see we have spades poker night. It really should be under the social category we just mentioned. So let's go through the process of moving that. As we look at this, our residents are discussing what would be a good night to have poker and spades night. So as I said, we want to move this from the general category into the social category. So what we'll do is we'll click on Edit, Delete Topic. We'll highlight Spades Poker Night and click Edit. And here you see it gives us a choice of all the different categories we've created in our community. So in this particular instance, we want to assign it to Social Activities. We simply save our changes. And here you'll notice that our Social Activities category, once we click on it, we'll see our Spades Poker Night. And we also see that the latest post was from Michael Henderson, which is denoted under our latest post column. Let's look at some of the new functionality available to administrators. We'll click on our social activities category. And you'll also notice here, as you scroll through the topics, you'll see these two icons. They represent lock and pin. If, for instance, there's a topic that needs to be closed, where all the entries have been taken, for instance, as an administrator, I may decide that this aquarium trip is no longer necessary to take commentary on. I would click to lock this. 
Residents will still be able to view it, but no one will be able to add commentary. On the other hand, to pin an item means that there's a particular item that I may want seen over other items. So when you pin something, it places it at the very top of the list. So when my residents come to social activities, the very first thing they'll see is this aquarium trip. If I'm trying to make this trip happen really soon, and it's important for me to remind my residents by pinning it to the very top of the message board. These functions are only available to administrators. Also, for profiles that have a husband and wife on them, whenever I'm in the message board posting something, I want to be sure that I'm actually posting as me. Here, you'll see a display of my user profile as I'm navigating the message board feature. And if I were not Scott, if I were, say, for instance, his wife Christine, I would simply click Switch User. Residents can also subscribe to a particular category or an individual message strand. For instance, if I want to be notified whenever there are new social activities posts made, I can click subscribe and receive an email each time a new topic or message is posted to this entire category. And of course, I can also subscribe to the individual posts within that category. So if I'm waiting for residents to go ahead and coordinate this aquarium trip, I want to subscribe. Keep in mind, just as we did when we moved our spades poker night from the general category into the social activities category, an administrator can move topics between categories, but of course can still not edit a particular resident's post. As we touched on earlier, one of the true advantages of this new message board functionality is the fact that you can create specific categories for specific residents or groups. For instance, if I want to create a new category for just the Children's Entertainment Committee. I can do that and I can give them an individualized security level just so that the people in that group can see and interact with this message board. So lots of great new functionality and control for this feature. Since this feature has been upped, you'll notice on your website that your messages have been placed into the general category where you can disperse them the way you wish. However, like with all of our upped features, if you decide you want to revert to the old message board feature, it's a very simple process. As an administrator, you'll simply go to the admin menu, click on settings, scroll down to your message board settings, and here you'll see use new up message board. Click no, and then click save changes. Let's move along to our next enhancement. This enhancement is to our task manager feature. And this is an enhancement to the process of creating task manager reports. Now you have the ability to create a task manager report that covers all the categories across the entire feature. So suppose we want to run a report of all open tasks, for instance. We'll click Create Task Manager Report. We'll title this All Open Tasks for let's say the month of October. We'll select open here. Since those are our only two categories, arc requests and board tasks, we'll check both or either check this box to check all. Here we'll select our due date range. So for this example, we want the month of October. And if we'd like, we can even search by the person responsible for creating the tasks. We'll generate the report. And here we'll see a report of all our open tasks for the month. A great way to keep up with what's going on in our task manager feature and exactly the reporting format that the individual might need. So now it's a piece of cake to run reports of all your open, closed, closed pending, or tasks on hold, whether it's all tasks across committees. Let's move along to the next enhancement. And this will be an enhancement to our eForms feature. We'd now like to introduce easy eForms ordering. Let's see it in action. We're going to look at our holiday party survey. So here we've already set up an eForm for our holiday party survey, asking our residents some general questions about a holiday party that we're planning. Now suppose we want to change the order of these questions. Maybe we want right after name for the email address to be the very next field that appears here. Well, the new easy eForms ordering will save you a lot of time in making that happen. Let's click here to edit this eForm, and we'll scroll down to 
edit form fields. Now if we turn the clock back, in the past you may have noticed on this same screen there was an ordering field where you'd have to numerically enter where you wanted these questions to appear. And of course you'd have to save each one each time. With this new functionality, it's as simple as drag and drop. We want our email address question to be the second one that appears, so we simply grab it, drag it up to the top, and place it where we'd like it. We can do the same for any number of these fields until we get this eForm exactly the way we want. We click Preview, and as you can see, our email address field is now number two. Another enhancement to save you time and give you greater control. As you drag these questions where you'd like and reorder them in the way that you'd like, no need to click save each time. The feature auto saves it as you drag and drop. As all those adjustments we just made are here on this eForm now. Let's move along to the next enhancement. I'm sure you've been playing around in our menu manager feature. We've made several enhancements to this feature based on your feedback. Like for instance, when you make a change and apply it, we've added pop-ups to tell you what changes have been successfully updated. There's a few other gems here too, so explore the feature. And of course, if you have any feedback on things you'd like to see added, don't hesitate to shoot us an email or give us a call. And of course, last but not least, we have all new email bulletins for use in your communities. Scroll through and I'm sure you'll find something that you like. And of course, you can always click on and customize these as you see fit. Well, that'll just about do it for what's new in At Home Net. We thank you for your time and for your business. And of course, if you have new ideas for enhancements or new features, send us an email to support at athomenet.com. That concludes this month's edition of What's New. We'd like to thank all of our existing clients for your time and for your business. As always, we encourage your feedback and ideas, so if you have any suggestions for new features or new enhancements to existing features, send us an email to support at athomenet.com. If you don't have website service with us and you like what you see, send us an email to sales at athomenet.com or give us a call at 1-800-556-7852. Be sure to tune in next month for more new features and more new enhancements from AtHomeNet.